Welcome back to Fast Money. We've got an earnings alert on Lyft. The stock is rocketing higher right now, up by more than 6%. The company's conference call is underway. Let's get to Deidre Bosa, who's got the details. D. Yeah, Melissa, they are rocketing higher. They were volatile at first, but they decidedly moved higher on guidance that was just outlined on the call. The company expecting Q2 revenue of between $680 and $700 million, representing growth of more than 100% as it laps the bottom of covid also accounts for revenue from bikes and scooters doubling quarter over quarter. Now, in terms of adjusted EBITDA loss, Outlook calls for a loss of between 34 and $45 million before breaking even in the third quarter. So the ride-sharing recovery, that continues, and Lyft is emerging a leaner, more efficient company. Still, though, there are questions around driver supply and gig worker status. On the call, CEO Logan Green called the driver shortage an industry-wide dynamic and said that they are focused on achieving a better balance in Q2 and beyond. President John Zimmer then said that higher earnings could actually lead to better supply. Have a listen. In some of our busiest markets, drivers have been earning around $35 per hour on average. We believe more drivers may return to the platform or sign up to drive for the first time based on these dynamics. So that would be sort of organic supply coming back online. And Lyft also said that riders have been less sensitive to price increases. But as one analyst pointed out, higher driver wages and higher rider costs likely untenable in the longer run. Zimmer responded by saying balance is the name of the game. And we shall see how that plays out, Melissa. Just before I jumped on TV... Finally, a question on gig worker status and labor regulation. Execs said that Prop 22, that was the landmark ballot in California that went in their favor. Uh, the company said that was a good model that they would try to replicate and that would cost uh, potentially less than it did the first time they went through that battle. Back over to you. All right, Deidre, thank you. And by the way, be sure to tune into Squawk Box tomorrow for a first on CNBC interview with Lyft president and co-founder John Zimmer. Let's trade Lyft, which is now up by more than 7% in the after-hour session. Uh, Grasso, what do you make of this? I mean, it sounds like uh, it's back to pre-pandemic levels, and it sounds like it's made, or the, at least Zimmer believes, that perhaps some changes have been made to the business model, some dynamics might persist, which may make it a better model than pre-pandemic. Yeah, and, and, and to what Deirdre was just talking about, the gig worker status, that's the real uh, issue that we're dealing with. And uh, just a couple of days ago, I, I believe it was uh, end of last week, Biden administration said that they should be looked upon and he would like them to be looked upon as employees. That's going to be a headwind that's going to continue through this uh, through this cycle or through this administration. Obviously, this is a get back to work stock. And I was looking at a chart right uh, when Deirdre was talking. It, it tested or was below the 100 day moving average the last time in November. It's below. It was below it now until it popped after hours. This chart is a little more devastating than Uber's chart. So you know what I like to do, or would you rather? I'd rather Uber at this point, but I think both of them are due for a sustained pop higher, and they could probably hold these levels. But I would watch the 100 day on mm -hmm. both of the stocks, the uh, Uber and Lyft. You mean you like to be recalcitrant, but uh, I'll, I'll let that go. Um, Karen, you know, good part word. of this reopening is, <laughs> it's a very good word, right? Um, part of this reopening is that people are going back to work. They, don't, may, they may not necessarily feel comfortable yet taking mass transportation. But if, if costs are higher, eventually that may go away, especially as the economy reopens, people get vaccinated, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you wonder sort of how much of this sort of halo lasts for, for the ride sharing companies. Uh, well, especially since a lot of people ended up buying cars, used cars, new mm. cars, right? Um, so I'm not sure. Definitely this would be a Tom Lee epicenter stock, right? The reopen trade. I mean, these were some pretty impressive numbers. I think Uber is actually up a couple bucks on the heels of these numbers uh, because they were pretty impressive, both the numbers and the, and the guidance. So uh, I think there's more to run. I like what Lyft has been doing. I like the pure playness of it. I like them selling the autonomous driving, which was subscale anyway, um, and really trying to slim down the balance sheets in decent shape. So I don't own it. Um, it's not the craziest valuation. If you if you think that I do believe that they will get to EBITDA break even, and we'll see how it accelerates from there. If I if I, can I would would you rather myself? I would you know. You may do it, Uber. Karen. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> Tim Seymour, Karen makes a very good point in terms of paring down to focus singularly on ride sharing. And if you like that sort of, um, you know, trade with the reopening, then you got to like Lyft. And I guess the question is, do you like that trade? I, I like Lyft. I like Uber more. By the way, speaking of likes, he knows that Steve said, you know, I like to you know, do self would you rather. I was thinking, but Melissa doesn't like when you do that. But, Thank uh, you. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you have a case here where you the investment did it. that Uber you did has it too. made. You just I, did I, it. Yeah. Well, Everybody do what they want tonight. All right. It's just up for grabs on Fast Money. Do whatever you want. Play whatever game you want. I'll just sit here and smile and read the tease. Go ahead. Well. <laughs> All right. So I was I was a little creative in, in my my doing it. But but the bottom line here is the investment that Uber has made into their food delivery business and transportation as a service business, uh, logistics ERP. Remember, this sounds a little bit like investments that Amazon was making at times. People didn't understand it. They thought it was too complex. I, I think I think this is to be invested alongside of with Uber. And I think it's been already proven to give them an advantage, especially as we do open and the operational leverage in their business. So they've all gotten leaner and meaner mm -hmm. coming out of this. They're all better run companies. They all have tailwinds of demand. Uh, the driver dynamics, yes, they're going to lean into the driver experience is what, what Lyft just told you because they have to. They have no choice. And, and I think the drivers are in a much better position now for as long as demand is this strong. It won't always be this way and the business will calibrate backwards. But right now, Uber's the better trade. Quick comment to Guy Dami. I respect your authority, so I'm anything but recalcitrant. And I would, would you rather, I would be in Lyft. And I will tell you, their pathway to profitability is clear. Their losses were half of what the street was looking for. And I think it takes out that $68 high we saw in mid or so March. I shall smile now and read the teeth. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.